Welcome to Pixel Hobbies. If you're new to my channel, a big welcome. Here you'll find RC reviews, upgrades and mods, and run videos related to RCs. Before we dive in, please hit that like and subscribe buttons as they will help greatly with the algorithm and the channel. Much appreciated. As most of you know, I'm a big fan of Element Enduro platform. And that started with the original release of the Element Enduro Sendero from a few years back. So when they announced the Sendero Sport Edition for $299, I had to check it out. My pre-order finally arrived. So today, let's take a first look at the new Element Enduro Sendero Sport Edition. Here's the Element Enduro Sendero Sport Edition out of the box. The body looks to be the same as the original Sendero at first glance, but that is not the case and there are a lot of changes. This is actually a one-piece Sendero body with a slightly different gray color that seems to be a bit of yellow tint to it. The one-piece body is a much better design it provides more rigidity than two-piece that just flex way too much. They also painted the exterior fenders and the lower rocker panels giving it a two-tone paint job and making it look nicer and something that many people ended up doing so kudos to the element. In addition, they also painted the drop bed which gives a nice depth to it. However, the front lights and the grill are now just a simple sticker, cost savings at hand to target a cheaper point of entry. Both the front bumpers, rear bumpers are new as well. They are much better looking than the original and more importantly, one that is now useful than the immediate throwaway of the originals. The new front and rear bumpers fit snugly against the body for added approach and departure angles and just look awesome. The front bumper even includes a fair lead, which is nice to see. The tires are no longer branded but it uses Element's new pin sticker tires that are 4.75 inches tall with aggressive thread pattern and wrapped around 1.9 inch steely beadlock wheels with center cap. Let's get the body off to take a closer look under the body. Starting from the front, the first thing I notice is the hard plastic molded inner fenders. I'm glad to see that the inner fenders are included in an entry level RTR. It just adds a bit of scale realism. Although it includes the chassis mounted servo plate, the servo is mounted on top of the axle and comes with a metal servo horn. Servo and axle setup provides a better performance by keeping the center of gravity lower. The integrated chassis mounted servo plate will function as a servo winch mount so it will be a breeze to add winch if you desire. Next we see the new Stealth XF transmission with the forward motor mount. The new design moves the motor forward that improves weight distribution and the transmission also sits quite low which should help with the CG. Stealth XF transmission also comes stock with a 1 to 1 ratio unlike the previous Stealth X transmission, but you can still adjust the rear drive ratio using the factory team gears which are sold separately, allowing the transmission to overdrive the front a mild 5.7% or a more aggressive 11.83%. Personally, I'm a big fan of overdrive, so I would recommend going with this 6% for trailing and going with a more aggressive overdrive for a crawler. Additionally, a few third-party vendors offers option to increase the overdrive to 25% as well, so that would be my choice for a crawler. As for the electronics, it follows the other Enduro line using full set of Reedy products. The motor is a brushed 5-slot 16-turn crawler motor, and the ESC is a water-resistant SC480X brush ESC with a T-plug connector. 
Personally, I've been quite happy with the motor, but I found that Hagrin 1080 ESC for $42 is a much better option and well worth the ESC upgrade. The transmitter radio and the receiver are 4 channel fly sky which feels good in hand. The third channel is a 3 position switch so you can set up a winch on the channel. And the fourth channel is just a click button so you can set up lights on it. They have the shorty battery tray installed, but they do include the bigger battery tray as an option. One thing, the battery tray is mounted after the transmission, which I'm not a big fan of, as it hurts the overall weight distribution. It looks like, due to the forward motor mount, they had to move the battery tray to the rears. It has nice plastic sliders where the body is protected. In the original, the body sat on top of the bars in a cutout and it had tendency to tear at that point. The ESC is mounted on the passenger side and the receiver sits inside the receiver box on the driver's side. Finally, they have a fuel cell at the back. The chassis rails are the same as the other Enduro line, but they added additional holes for bearing wheelbases so you can extend the wheelbase to 12.8 inches or as short as 11.4 inches very easily. The shocks are plastic body and plastic cap with mini spring setup. The cap now comes with a bleeder screw for easy airless bleeding. Element usually offers one of the better shocks in the market, so time will tell, but overall it's probably not going to be as reliable as the aluminum shocks. They've updated the axle, now runs with larger input bushings, which is agreeable to bearings, and a new diff cover that adds the ability to add waste on the inside to maintain a scale look. I know that Element was trying to keep the price under $300, but personally, I would have paid a bit more for it to come with the bearings instead. That being said, am I going to switch them out right away? No, I'm going to see how they actually do before making a decision. Another area that Element saved money on are the links. Both the front four link and the rear four link are plastic. It's by design to get the point of entry low. That being said, quite few people that I know, including me, upgraded the metal links on the other Enduro trucks to metal high clearance links. So I'm okay with this decision by Element. Lastly, Element continues its trend of offering the box that can be converted into a garage. It follows the original Sendero's theme, which I like. Overall, I am very impressed with the truck at the $299 price. The redesign addressed many of the issues from the original Sendero. In order to keep the price low, they made sacrifices such as bushings, plastic links, plastic shocks, lack of overdrive gears. But overall, I am surprised with the amount of features they were able to pack into the price, and I think you will be too. So stay tuned for more videos on Sendero Spur Edition. Hope you found the information helpful. Please like and subscribe, and make sure to hit the notification bell so that you can be alerted when new videos are uploaded. Thanks for watching Bixel Hobbies.